We're joined by hurricane specialist Brian Norcross. Brian, good to see you this morning. Rapid intensification, will that be what is remembered most of this 2023 20, season? In other words, your takeaways. I, I think the thing we're going to remember from this season is the challenging forecast problems, right? Mm. It wasn't just uh, Otis, which was really a breakdown in the uh, system we have for forecasting storms. We should not have uh, hurricanes explode off the coast that the day before were not forecast to do that, right? They, there was, you know, a day's warning more or less of a stronger storm mm -hmm. in Acapulco, but th that's not enough for a, a Category 5 hurricane. But also in the Atlantic, the forecast for four or five days out were the worst in many years. Mm. Uh, and a lot of that was driven by Philippe and Rena and, and that whole thing that happened east of Puerto Rico where right. it was forecast to go north and it ended up going west. Oh, and right. it was, you know, hundreds and hundreds of miles off in the forecast. But that wasn't, that wasn't all. There were other forecast challenges. And so uh, this, more than any season that I can recall, I think is going to cause scientists to go back and look and say, okay, we were on this trajectory mm -hmm. or better, 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 better. And now suddenly we got worse. And, you know, was it just that the storms were weird? Or is there something that we can point to in the system, in the modeling yep. that, that could make a difference? And, and you hear in sports all the time that analogy that you're only as strong as, as your weakest link. And, right. and I think that some years are just learning years, which is good. I mean, when we look at the landfalling systems in the continental United mm -hmm. States here, Idalia, the only Hurricane. It was right. a major hurricane, right. and, and we often, you know, say it only takes one. But when we look at one of the top five most active seasons and only getting this one hurricane to make landfall, that was a doozy, though. The Big Bend right. of Florida. Well, we were, you know, super lucky overall. The folks right. in, in the Big Bend and the folks across North Florida and into the Carolinas or in South Georgia probably didn't feel totally lucky. But the, right. the, the fact was that we had a big dip in the jet stream over the eastern part of the U.S., that deflected the storms to the north. It also deflected Idalia on that path. It, it took, Idalia came early. It was an October path, mm -hmm. but it was earlier in the year. That bending to the north like that is like storms do in October. But Ian also did that the year before, you know. So we've had this sort of dip in the jet stream thing that has kept a lot of the storms offshore. When, and, and, uh, and, you know, so... We, in some sense, in the U.S., we were lucky about that. But, of course, we had Hillary in Southern California as and well. And when we're looking at, at all of those storms in the Atlantic Basin, it does certainly look active. But, yeah, the, the first one to have impacts in the United States was Hillary in right. the Eastern Pacific. Right. And I guess since we were transitioning from this La Nina phase to an El Nino, we knew that the Eastern Pacific would perhaps be a hotbed, but right. the Eastern Atlantic was very warm. Hillary, what a unique storm that that was. I guess right. Otis is the one that will be remembered most, but Hillary making that trajectory up, I, mm -hmm. I guess the takeaway is that California was in the cone more this season than what, Florida? Florida than South Florida, <laughs> exactly How right. How is that possible? Southern California right? had more cone than South Florida. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. crazy. You know, I mean, it, it happens in Southern California that you get tropical systems coming north. Uh, doesn't happen very often. And, and I guess we'll see as the, the climate evolves and mm -hmm. where storms track. Uh, but the, the situation in the Pacific was we had the El Nino. We had pools of warm water, although right off California, it was actually quite cool. But it was yeah. enough. The dip in the jet stream out there that drove it north was enough to make it move fast enough to maintain those tropical characteristics all the way to California. And that's what doesn't often happen. We get tropical surges of moisture. Sure but not the the cohesive storm right. moving north. Sometimes that tropical surge, too, right. can help with, with a bit of the mo monsoon. Right. Uh, one, one other point, when, when we're looking at it, the, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, vastly missing from landfalling storms. They needed a break. We had Harold that, that moved along into the lower Texas coastline, but Mississippi, or Louisiana, not at all dealing with storms. And, and that's could, led to a drought, I guess. They got. could have stood a, a tropical storm right? or a tropical this depression point. or something this year. Yeah, but that was that dip in the jet stream. So think of a scoop on the eastern part of the the U.S. that pushed everything offshore and to the north. So when you look at all those tracks, you see them all uh, turning mm -hmm. north, one after the other after the other. Thankfully, 
Uh, that's what kept them away. But there is a downside because the rain averages do count on tropical moisture coming into the south. Like, yeah. like we have seen. Now yeah. New Orleans at a nearly 30-inch uh, deficit. Okay, so we're in this window, Brian, where seasons, they overlap. Hurricane season winding down. Winter is coming, so it only makes sense to bring in our winter storm specialist as well. Tom Nizzle on the conversation. Not to make a joke, but um, I guess Brian's going into hibernation. And, Tom, you're, <laughs> you're coming out of the cave now. The, these winter <laughs> – go ahead. What? Well, he is, and to have a little bit of fun here, Brian is actually, thank you, Brian, <laughs> handing off the baton. Uh, we have it right here. There you go. Quite and, literally. Uh, going from tropical <laughs> to winter. So, yes, thank you, Brian. Yeah. I, I think if you guys have time for some levity, uh, a quick trivia, and, and hopefully, uh, Tom, you're able to, to see this image. Look at this satellite image. So it's from a storm that formed sometime this year. We have a little bit of time now to, to analyze it. This is both, Brian, for you and Tom. I think I'm going to ask Tom you first since you just joined us. As far as the image, as we wait for that thing to pop up, it's of some sort of storm. You guys both see it? Look at it for a second. Tom, what are your first thoughts? It's beautiful. That's my first thought. <laughs> um, certainly, if it was up along the uh, New England coast in winter, it would likely be a nor'easter. Brian? Uh, that looks like the January uh, <laughs> tropical system to me that, that formed off of North Carolina and moved to the north into Atlantic Canada. January. Did you hear that, Tom? <laughs> it happened in January, so I guess maybe these seasons overlap. And, yeah, Brian, it's that it's an unnamed tro subtropical storm, January 16th and 17th. The, the National Hurricane Center, as you guys know, it concluded that, that this low developed over the Gulf Stream, it had short-lived subtropical mm -hmm. characteristics. It made that landfall in, in Nova Scotia. But, Tom... We got some snow. It wasn't directly correlated to it, but Maine, Bangor picked up on the 16th of January about four inches worth of snow. Would that have been worth covering? <laughs> well, let me tell you also, Boston, during a two-day period, picked up three and a half inches. It was our highest two-day snowfall for the entire winter in Boston. Mm -hmm. Go figure. I mean, Brian, when it comes to it, January, was that a bit of a surprise? What are your thoughts on that subtropical storm? Well, again, you know, these kind of freaky things happen. In the past, they would have never been counted as a tropical system, but now we can analyze them so much more closely and, and really know what's going on in the mm -hmm. core. It would have just been, like Tom said, kind of a nor'easter kind of storm uh, that formed off the Carolinas as yeah. things do in the winter and moved to the north. But because we can so precisely precisely analyze the temperatures within the system, uh, the Hurricane Center was able, uh, after the fact, to go back and say, yes, that mm -hmm. meets our definition of a subtropical storm. So it, it doesn't get a name, but it gets counted as a named storm, and that's how we ended up uh, at 21. A reanalysis. I appreciate it's you guys 20. both playing that trivia, and quite literally the baton. Mm -hmm. Tom Nizzle has got it. Appreciate you both <laughs> joining us this morning. Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross, as well as Tom Nizzle. Get ready, Tom. Might get kind of messy this season. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.